Welcome to our Palm Sunday service. We're really pleased that you could join us uh, for our worship today. We're going to be singing together, we're going to be having an opportunity to pray and to hear from God's Word. And also, as a special treat today, we're going to be joined by Johnny and Jamie. More of that later. As we begin our service, let's join together in this prayer of confession, recognising that we all need to put ourselves right with God. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Let me read to you a verse from Matthew chapter 21. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Let's sing together.
Hey, Johnny, have you got your branch thing? No, it was scratchy, so I put it down. What do I even need that for? It's for Palm Sunday. What's Palm Sunday? Is it when we all do barn dancing? Not Palm Sunday, Johnny. Palm. P a l m. Palm Sunday. Palm? Oh, okay. What's that when it's at home? Is it when we all go and play high five everyone with our palms? That doesn't make sense, Johnny. We're sock puppets and we don't have hands, so we certainly don't have any palms. It's when we all wave our palm branches to celebrate Jesus. Why? Because Jesus gave us trees? No, sweetie. It's to remember the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. What's a triumphal entry? Well, it's the beginning of the Easter story. It's when Jesus and lots of other people travelled to Jerusalem for a special feast, a big celebration called the Passover. Jesus was something called the Messiah, a special king people had been waiting hundreds of years to come, and the triumphal entry is what they called it when Jesus came into the city. Oh, so did he come into Jerusalem in a big procession with fanfares and streamers and acrobatic dancers and riding on an elephant like Aladdin did when he was pretending to be a prince? Prince Ali, fabulous he, Ali Ababwa. No, he didn't. He came into the city riding on a little donkey. Why on a donkey? He must have looked a bit silly. Jesus wasn't like other kings, Johnny. He didn't do things to make himself look more powerful. Oh, that's so Jesus! Yes, but the people who loved Jesus wanted to make it special. So they put some of their cloaks on the donkey so Jesus would be comfortable riding it. And some other people threw their cloaks onto the ground so the donkey would be comfortable walking on it. And the people who didn't have cloaks to throw, well, they threw branches they had cut in the fields onto the path. Oh, so that's what the branches are about. Yes, and lots of those branches would have been from palm trees. That's why we call it Palm Sunday. Not Barn Sunday, because they didn't throw barns in front of Jesus and the donkey. Of course not. Anyway, Jesus and the donkey rode into the city as the people cheered and shouted with joy. Now I get it. So, can we go and play Palm Sunday in the garden? You be Jesus, I'll be one of the people throwing palms, and we can use the dog as the donkey. Oh, Johnny, I'm not sure he would like that. <laughs> reading comes from Matthew 21. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage on Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Unite them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They bought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered the Jerusalem, the whole city stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome to St. John's and uh, St. James's online this Palm Sunday morning. We all know what it's like to be waiting for something. Sometimes it's good, like a birthday, a party, a holiday. Sometimes it's hard, like a driving test or an appointment with a dentist. But both ways there's a sense of anticipation, whether it's excitement or foreboding. It must have been like that for Jesus. 
his disciples and the large crowd that accompanied him that fateful Sunday morning in Israel as they crested the brow of the hill, the Mount of Olives, and saw the city of Jerusalem spread out before them. The crowd had, it was a carnival atmosphere. Maybe it, here at last was the leader who would drive out the hated Romans. Perhaps the hard life they lived would be relieved. They cheered and started shouting out revolutionary songs. Hosanna, Saviour, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they were talking about the Lord God, not the Lord Caesar. For Jesus, though, it was so different. He had set his face towards Jerusalem, and we can read about it back in chapter 16. And he'd worked out, though, from the Bible what awaited him in the city. And he knew his destiny. He knew the prophecies he would fulfil. Can you imagine what was going through his mind? The gut-wrenching anticipation, all the rejection from God's own people, the desertion of his disciples, all the weight of the cruel injustice of the Roman Empire that would be poured on his head, all the agony of the cross, all the separation from fellowship with the Father as he drank the very dregs of hell for each and every one of us. For Jesus, this was the anticipation of the conflict to come. Until now, he'd kept a low profile. When he healed people, he told them not to broadcast it. He kept out in the country much of the time, up in Galilee in the north. But now he came deliberately out in the open, deliberately saying and doing things that would provoke a response. The secret of the Saviour of the world, the Messiah, had come. That secret was now out in the open. And that's what the donkey was all about, the colt. People would see the connection with the words of the prophet Zechariah about the king, and the king he was entering Jerusalem on a donkey. From the story, Jesus had obviously prearranged this donkey, and how vivid a picture it was of who he was. It would be like, a, like the football champions touring their city in an open-topped bus, something we're not going to experience this year, I think. He went down the hill into the valley that lies in front of the city, and we read that the whole city was stirred, the word being shaken or in an uproar. And they demanded to know, who is this man? The large crowd had become a huge crowd, mainly Galilean pilgrims coming to the Passover feast the next week, shouting his praises. The city people, the Judeans, didn't want to have this upstart rocking their boat they didn't want the Romans to get upset. They didn't want the status quo to be disturbed. How soon it would be then before shouts of Hosanna turned to crucify him. Jesus' anticipation of what lay ahead of him turned into confrontation, not, as we might think, primarily with the authorities, so much as with the powers of, of sin and death, the spiritual evils we all know inhabit our world, and our own lives too. Confrontation. Jesus was saying, crown me or kill me. Crown me or kill me. A man calls for the hospital chaplain and then tells him he doesn't need him anymore. The doctor's got the diagnosis wrong and he didn't have cancer, so I don't need God anymore. Has COVID-19 rocked your boat? What will it be like for you after the pandemic is over? Will you go back to the old ways? Or will you step out on a new path? A path of the King of Kings. A path of light and life and adventure. Excitement. Jesus has gentle hands and is a sure guide. Look for a moment at the colt on which he rode. An unbroken beast accepted his first rider and allowed Jesus to lead it through the, the yelling, jostling crowd, a new experience for the colt, but he trusted in the rider.
the Lord Jesus. So let me ask you, firstly, will you be like the Galilean pilgrims, shouting and waving, assuming that Jesus was there for their agenda, to get rid of the Romans, the struggles of life, and so on? Will you ignore Jesus and try to keep control of your life, your religion, your way? Will you ignore Jesus? Or secondly, will you be like the Jerusalem crowd? Get him out of here. We don't want him. He upsets us. We don't want to follow him. He's messing it up for us. Will I kill him? Maybe not physically, but metaphorically. Or thirdly, will we be, strange as it may seem, like the cult taken and guided by the sure, gentle hands of Jesus, going to new places, whatever the threats, whatever the noise, whatever the uncertainty, but also the joy and the hope and whatever the future holds? Will I go with Jesus all the way? Will I crown him? Crown him, king of my life? Will I ignore him? Will I kill him? Will I crown him? To help us decide, let's look at one more thing. The amazing love of Jesus. We read in Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, as Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, if only you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it's hidden from your eyes. The motive above all behind everything that Jesus was and did is his love for each and every one of us. A young man called Samuel Trevor Francis was crossing the Thames on a bridge, wrestling with the sadness in his soul. He was tempted to throw himself into the river to end it all. But then a voice came into his heart. You do believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, don't you? I do do believe, he replied. And from that moment, his life changed. He served the Lord and travelled the world for the next 73 years. And what made it, what was it that motivated, what was it that gripped him, that got hold of him so powerfully that it transformed his life? It was the love of the Lord Jesus. He wrote one of the most breathtakingly glorious hymns about it. One of my favourites. As I was preparing this talk and reflecting on the love that drove Jesus through Palm Sunday and the cross and the glorious resurrection, I was moved to tears. I really was. And in the night hours, I realised afresh the intensity of Jesus' love for me and how he has been with me all these years and will be with me to all the years or time that I have left. We don't know what the future holds, but we know Jesus holds the future in his everlasting loving arms. Let the words of a couple of the verses of this, this hymn stir and bring life and hope and confidence into your soul. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus vast, unmeasured, boundless, free, rolling as a mighty ocean in its fullness over me. Underneath me, all around me, is the current of thy love, leading onward, leading homeward to thy glorious rest above. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus, love of every love the best. Tis an ocean vast of blessing, tis a haven sweet of rest. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus, tis a heaven of heavens to me, and it lifts me up to glory, for it lifts me up to thee. So what will your response be this morning? Will you ignore Jesus? 
Will you kill Jesus? Or will you crown him as Lord of your life? For those who choose to ignore him or even kill him, I can't help you. For those who want to crown him, follow me in this prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the amazing love you show me by going through all this to buy me forgiveness from my sin and a new life to live. I commit myself and the rest of my life to you. Lead and guide me by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. Dearest Lord, as we come together to pray on this Palm Sunday, please fill our hearts with your love. Dearest Lord, we pray for all those that are suffering because of COVID-19. We pray for all their loved ones 
and all friends and family. Dearest Lord, we also bring forth to you our world leaders and politicians. Lord, we pray that you will share your wisdom with them so that we might find a way of healing divisions, bring healing to the countries of your world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all health workers and for all social care carers and all people on the front line. Lord, protect them. Lord, give them resilience. Lord, help them to know that they are so loved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift all those that are sick, all those that may be feeling anxious or frightened at this time. Lord, give them your comfort and give them your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray in confidence the prayer that our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Do join us next Sunday for our special Easter service and why not invite friends and family, share the link with them so that they can celebrate Easter together with us. If you've been listening to this at uh, 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, uh, do join us for tea and coffee via Zoom. The link is in the email you should have received on Saturday. But as we finish now, hear these words of blessing. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.